I have my master's in business just from the school of hard knocks. You know yeah. what I mean? Not I do have a business degree, but the master's part came because just hard knocks, just experience, just getting burnt, learning from mistakes. Yep. Welcome back, folks. This is episode 18 of It's About Your Paycheck. And we're talking about the Susu. Before we get into the details of that, what's up, Walt? How you doing today, sir? It's not your auntie Susu. The Susu. It might circle. be, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It might be your auntie and Susu. It might though. be your auntie. Yeah, it might be. She might she might be into this. Uh, I'm doing good, man. How about you? Good, man. Man, good, bro. I'm literally going through the highs and the lows. It it never fails when something good, yeah, we get the high, but then something the lows coming and hey, you gotta deal with both. You gotta balance it out. And that's why we say to each other all the time, don't go too low. Don't go too high. Got to keep triumph, it balanced. Triumph and defeat. Feel, triumph and defeat. So. Triumph and defeat, bro. Triumph yep. and defeat. Keep, <laughs> treat them both just the same. Treat yeah, them imposters just the same. We need to come out with a song. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> we could yeah. probably could. You could write yeah. this out. I'm not a, but if y'all don't know, Walt has a SoundCloud out there. You might want to look for Walt's SoundCloud and hear yeah. his music. He is a talented music artist. <laughs> hey, no, for but, real. Hey, you got, uh, no, you got. You, you, bro, you definitely have talent. You never, yeah. I don't know how, wait you, wait, you did tell me like when you were younger, you had a group, you and your oh, yeah. two, yeah. two audio. There's a couple of neighbors, man. We got together. See? We just freestyle you see? Some beats and stuff. And now if y'all kept like, with that, you could have been the, you could have been up yeah. there with the greats. Yeah, I think you got, go. I think you have talent at this. You did payroll instead of music. That's yeah, all. I did <laughs> instead of music you yeah. see what i'm saying yeah i, I should have done music and stand up that's what it should have been dang yes i don't know how <laughs> funny you are though you got a comedy skit you funny like that but can you do 10 minutes of comedy i now now I we're now just talking just talking about my life can? yeah i can absolutely yes wait so then yeah. you have to go to a stand-up comedy spot and do get on what is it open been, mic night i've been thinking about it honestly you need honestly, to do an I open have. mic get yeah. Shoot, let me know so I can be in the crowd recording and we can have some clips for the show. Brian will be like, boo, you suck. I'll be your heckler. I'll be in the crowd yeah. heckling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm good, bro. Oh, so, that's funny. My dentist calling me. I got a dentist appointment later. Anywho. Okay, okay. This episode is presented by Time Track Go, the simply better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. In addition to the unique graphical employee time card that helps you quickly identify and fix mistakes, TimeTrack Go is excited to announce it's now compatible with QuickBooks Desktop, providing effortless data transfer and reduced errors. TimeTrack Go will not only save you time and money each week, but the easy to understand user interface and the ability to turn an ordinary tablet into an employee time clock will get you and your team up and going in just minutes. Find out what a Simply Better solution can do for your business. To learn more and sign up for your 14-day free trial, go to www.timetrackgo.com. That's T-I-M-E-T-R-A-K-Go.com. Or call 888-321-9922. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. So, anywho, we getting into Susu. This is this about your paycheck? Did I cut you off? Did you, are we going to get into it? No, or? no, no. Oh, okay. I'm just going to get into it, yeah. yeah. That's it. We are, and I don't know if you folks have ever heard of a Susu, but it's this, like, informal savings group, right? And yeah. there, there are a few different names. And we're going to go, we're going to get into that. But before that, we have some pay news for you and keep you updated on what's going on and the things that impact your paycheck, impact your earnings, and Walt has the first story for you, and I will have the second. So go ahead and take it away, sir. Thank you, sir. So Absolutely. since we were talking about savings, I did some research and just wanted to get some stats about how much Americans save based on their age groups, right? So this is an article from marketwatch.com, and they have some pretty great stats out there. So according to the data available from the Federal Reserve's Board Survey of Consumer Finances, the median savings balance, not including retirement funds of Americans under 35, is just a little bit over $3,200. And that can jump up to 6400 for those between the ages of 54, uh, 55 to 64. 
So, oh, wow. yeah, so the latest data that's available from this source, it is from 2019, but some sources out there put the average savings even higher. Northwestern's, Northwestern Mutual's 2022 planning and progress study revealed that the average amount of personal savings, not including investments, was a little bit over 62000 in 2022. Now, while those numbers look high, there is one caveat to this, is that many Americans do not have any savings at all. According to bank rate data from January 2022, almost 60% of Americans are unable to cover an unexpected $1,000 bill or a current something right. that will happen. They don't, yeah. they, basically, they don't have $1,000 saved up for an emergency. So think about that. So if 60 percent of us can't do that means the people who are in that 40 percentile have all that savings to themselves yeah, basically so over yeah. yeah over half of us don't have enough money saved up or anything like that so that's just something to really think about there and that's pretty much it when i had for my news article what about you man yeah, no, that's a big call out because we covered that data point as well. The whole 60% of us don't have savings, don't have an emergency mm-hmm. fund. So it is, it is a great call out. And then it made me think about a, a, a recently demoed a company and I forgot the name of it. Maybe I can find it for the show. Anywho, it doesn't, there's not a lot of business or consumer opportunity with it. They're trying to sell this product to your company so that your company can give it to you for free. So that's yeah. why they came at me, right? As a HR payroll professional, we get a lot of demo solicitations. Hey, come look at what I got. Yeah. And so you guys can buy it from us and give it to your employees and stuff. This was a really great product, but it just... It's expensive one. It's expensive for the employer. Yeah. So I'm not, I wouldn't be mad at companies that don't offer it because, and I think honestly, the product was so good that I think I asked them, I was like, you should have, you should offer this directly to consumers because if I'm really serious about saving money and financial wellness, I yeah. and I think it was, I think they said it was only like a hundred and change per employee for mm-hmm. the year if they wanted to get it to themselves. And I get it. If you already can't save money, if you're not good with finances, you may not getting the hundred and two, let's say 200, let's call it $200 together to invest in this may be a challenge and a barrier. But yeah. anywho, one of the cool things that it did is if you could get involved in this program, but again, and it leads so good into SUSU because it's a forced savings, a forced or being held accountable to save the money. What yeah. they did was the product was that they helped you. They The first goal was to save $2,500 for emergency savings. Mm-hmm. Just put it aside. And I just told my daughter the same thing. I was like, she's, she's like trying to track her credit score and do this and that and save. And she's trying to pay attention to the financial wellness really early on. She's only 20. So That's this good. is the moment that what <laughs> she'd be a millionaire by 40 if she's, if she was aggressive with savings. Build good habits now, yeah. yes. Build good habits now, exactly. And that's what I was trying to tell her. And uh, yeah, I just thought that is a good starting point is that emergency savings funds. And then act like you don't have it. You have to now act like yeah. you're back to zero and then add the next goal on. So anywho, that yeah. was what, all that. Just your article made me think of all those things. The one I have going along the same thread here is understanding basic investing concepts. And this is from Forbes magazine. And the article covers five or so things or no, I just picked one of them out because it's, this stuff is difficult to understand for me. I can only give you what I understand folks. Sorry, but there's a ton of investing information out there, podcasts, websites, articles, books, forget about it. There's a ton of stuff. You just got to find where you're comfortable with. And that's why we're starting you off in that beginning of this journey. That's where this show falls. We are at the beginning of your financial wellness, right? So anywho, this Forbes article talks about two key ways to make money from investments are selling an asset or, well, selling an asset more for more than what you paid for it. They say capital gains, but think stock market, right? You buy a stock share for five bucks and maybe Two weeks later, it goes up to 10 bucks and you can sell it and boom, you just made a profit. And think about that across a lot of dollars, right? The stock market makes sense when you can invest tens of thousands of dollars into it. And if it goes up, your share goes up by percentages. Oof, you go up 50%, boom, now you got $15,000 out of of nowhere. When you start with 10, 
right? Yeah. It go, goes up 50%. Boom, you got 10,000. So that is what the, that's what they're saying. You're selling an asset for more than what you paid for it, or you could, that covers a lot of things. You can buy a car at one price and sell it for more, right? You can buy a house with one and sell it for more. These different purchases have different levels of complexity, but yeah. that is a basic uh, uh, understanding of how you make money, right? The yeah. other way is an earning yield, such as dividends or interest or rental income. So dividends, and there's a definition here, but the layman term is basically a dividend is from some stock purchases mm-hmm. pay their shareholders dividends every quarter. So depending on how much stock you have, you get a few dollars back. And again, it works in tens of thousands because if you have 10,000 shares of something and they give you two or $3 a share back every quarter, that's a lot of money that you're just making on dividends. You just own the stock, right? Yes. Interest is another thing. We always talk about interest in the banks, how they don't pay a lot, but maybe 401k might yield a little bit more, aggressive stock, something they may. In- so interest is another way. And the interest on things is how you make money back. You go, you put $100 yes. there and you get 5% interest, which is really good at a bank. But 5% interest back on that, right? You do the math, $5 back on this and that. that. That's how the interest works. Rental income yes. is a little easier to understand, right? You buy a house and you maybe your mortgage and expenses all in at three thousand, but maybe you can rent it for thirty five hundred. Boom, that five hundred becomes your income, right? So that's yes. an easier way to understand it. So those are two a few different ways to understand like some beginning investing. What again, basic investing concepts, Forbes magazine article. The link will be in the show notes. Yeah, I'm just looking through here. Yeah, yeah. So those are the layman's terms for, again, the article gets deep. And with these things, like where you got to, when you do the research and you dig in, every word you don't understand along that journey, you need to stop and look it up. That's, Stuff, yes. that's yeah, that's what takes it. That's what people don't want to do. Hopefully we'll take some of the work out of it, but this is not a financial advising show we just we're not <laughs> telling you how yes. to invest we're yes. just saying investing is important testimony key, <laughs> right investing is important and it's the key to building wealth and financial freedom right yeah and you, um and you definitely want to understand you definitely want to understand what the difference between an asset and a liability is right yeah in, in short assets put money in your pocket and liabilities take money out yeah right so, yeah, basically. Like, yeah. So I know Brian mentioned a car, right? You buy it for one price and then you may sell it for a different price, right? So let's say you brought a, an old school car, a, a real a throwback car, you put some time and energy into it and you paid a certain price and then you restore it and then you sell it for a little bit more. That's a little bit different than actually buying a newer car, which we all know as soon as you drive it off the lot, the it you know, it like nose dives in value. Depreciates. Yeah. It depreciates, right? And so you yep. that will happen. So that is a liability. So you want to understand the differences between what an asset is and what a liability is. So definitely educate yourself on that. All right. Yeah. So absolutely. now we're gonna get into it, man. Susu. What's what you Let's got, do you got it. in here, man? Yeah, so to break it down, right? What is a susu? We're we're spelling it S U S U. And it could also be spelled. Did you hear any background noise? Sounds like a, a bike or something. Oh, okay. I don't hear it now. It's like, yeah. it's- and work done in the bathroom, so it's making noise. Okay, so let's try it again. Oh, Hopefully, okay. it should be short term. So, yeah, a susu, we're spelling it S U S U. Another spelling is S O U dash S O U. It's an informal savings club that originated in West Africa. And the Caribbean, it's a rotating savings method where a small group of people contribute equal amounts of money to a pool on a regular basis. The pool Mm. is then paid out to a different member each month or each frequency until everyone Mm. in the group has received their share back or their total back, right? Susus are also known as merry-go-rounds, partners, podna. Padna. I don't know how. Padna. <laughs> Very Padna. slang. Yeah, but look it up. The notes. Soul yeah. and Sands. I don't know. 
I don't know what the savings club is a nice basic way to say it. There are yes. tradition that many cultures still participate in, even though they don't offer legal protection due to our general social groups that encourage thrift and can foster a sense of community building, discipline and accountability. Sure. The way it works is, again, the members pay a fixed equal amount into a common fund and on a weekly, biweekly or monthly basis. Folks yeah, take like turns said, to wanna... get paid yeah. back. Yeah. And again, is this legal? It's not. It doesn't provide the same legal protections or traditional banking. It's very much, but it's not illegal either. Only, yeah. you know, It's only illegal if you're literally doing something illegal as a result of it or part of it. Um, yeah. And just as a disclaimer, folks, this is not yeah. professional financial advice. Consulting financial advisor about your particular circumstances is best. But again, so that's how it works. My mom used to do it back in the day, and that's yeah, how I was exposed it, to it. Yeah. And, right? And I, that's yeah. how I brought it up because I'm thinking, before we did the research, I was like, oh, I bet nobody's ever heard of this. And my mom did yeah. some crazy stuff back in the day. And we did. The, I started doing the research, and I'm like, oh, of course, West Africans and Caribbeans invented it. Yep. So also, yeah. <laughs> yes. so no wonder why my Puerto Rican mom has done it. And she, yep. Right? Yeah, I'm in the Caribbean, like, yep. Yeah, and being in nursing, a lot of her coworkers were all, always Caribbean. So, anywho, and in, in nursing in New York more specifically. So, anywho, gotcha. yeah. So we thought this is interesting to talk about because it's a savings thing. And th- one of the things that I did when I was thinking about, it, I was like, wait a minute, how much do you put, Ma? One day, because I was like, always, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not great with math, but I was always curious about numbers right business numbers yeah. money making yeah, money yeah, yeah. what is that let me flip this for that how much do i make back and somebody put a bug in my my, my bag a battery in my back real early on and taught me hey you might make you could you can make one dollar too right i did the math one day and i was like wait ma, how much do you put in when how long and did the uh, calculate by how many times she put it and when do you get your money back and, oh down here oh okay because she wasn't she would always she never got the payment right away she was always one of the yeah. folks down the line and yeah. I think she did it on purpose. If I'm not mistaken, she said, no, put me down the line. Because so really she forced herself to save money. That's yeah. how she used it. Yeah. So because and after doing the math, I realized there's no benefit to this. You're just saving money, but you're giving it to somebody else to save it for you. <laughs> yeah. That's the only benefit you're really getting is forcing the save. So, yeah. What are your thoughts on it? I, I think it's interesting. I think if it's done that, it can definitely have some benefits. Like you said in your and what you said, it doesn't have the same protections as it would in an actual banking thing, especially if you're if you're just collecting people's payments from in Cash App or Zelle or whatever, and it's just sitting right. there. You, you, it's not accruing any interest. It's not doing this or anything like that. And there's nothing stopping a person who's in charge of collecting people's funds from just being like, all right, Dylan. I'm out. Yep. <laughs> so that's the thing you have to consider and worry about. That's how I feel about it. Before I get into it, is there anything else you want to say or anything, bro? No, I was just curious. Yeah, before you, you, you help us. Yeah, no, that was it. I was curious. Thank you, though. Okay. All right. So investing and participating in Susu Saving Circles can be beneficial in some ways as a financial strategy, but there are also some potential pitfalls to be aware of. So I'm going to go through a few different points, which include things to avoid and and how this may actually help. So the first Got point it. is community support. Susu saving circles often involve a close-knit community pulling their resources together and uh, this can provide a strong support network and foster trust amongst the participants. If you have a tight-knit group that you're already cool with, and you may not necessarily live in the same area, but you have a good friends group, then you may, you, this might be something that you want to consider amongst those people if you feel like they're trustworthy and you have that in place already. And it can, like I said, it can create even more trust amongst yourselves, right? Doing this regularly can give you some discipline, right? So regular savings will lead to discipline. So participating in the SUSU requires regular contributions, as Brian alluded to earlier, and that can instill discipline in in how you save. It can particularly be helpful for individuals who struggle to maintain a consistent savings habit, right? So everybody has an agreement, I hate, on every check, we're going to do this, and everybody will give the same amount. Then that then you'll be accountable to the people that you're in the group with, and they'll hold you accountable. Say, hey, you need to give your money. Everybody else did. Where's your money at? 
So that will, that could increase discipline, right? It'll give you access to funds, right? So think about that, the stat that we said, right? A, a lot of us don't have $1,000 in case of an emergency, let alone $500 dollars in case of an emergency, right? So this doing this, participating in one of these will give you access to some emergency funds. And it will be lump sum money that you can access in certain in intervals and which could be helpful for covering those unexpected expenses and or if you need to make a large purchase without resorting to those high interest loans like I had to do back in the day when I was struggling, those payday Pay advance loans, loans mm -hmm. man. And then they charge right. you, you get a thousand dollar loan and you end up paying $5,000 back. <laughs> you yeah, okay. I so kill you. Those things are crazy. Now, one of the pitfalls, it is a risk of default. So one of the potential downsides is the risk of default. If one or more participants fail to make their contributions, mm -hmm. that can disrupt the entire cycle and cause mm -hmm. financial strain on other members who may actually be relying on those funds. Right. So that's why you need to have the right group of people in it. Right. So building credit worthiness, consistently participating in and successfully completing a SUSU can demonstrate financial responsibility and help individuals build their credit worthiness, especially in communities where traditional banking services may be inaccessible or underutilized. To maximize the benefits of doing one of these susus or patna programs it's important Sorry. to choose <laughs> it's important to choose reliable partners selecting trustworthy mm -hmm. individuals to participate in the susu it can definitely mini minimize the risk of default and ensure a smooth operation you definitely want to define and set clear rules establish those rules and guidelines for contributions withdrawals and penalties for any missed payments to avoid misunderstandings or conflicts amongst those who are participating they can you can diversify savings so consider diversifying the savings by participating in multiple susu circles or combine susu savings with other investment strategies to mitigate risk and maximize returns so if you have an agreement in place like hey we're going to take some of this money we're going to all put in 150 dollars and of the 150 dollars 25 of that from each of us is going to go into this stock or into crypto or into this or whatever and that's an agreement that can help you diversify your savings and make you and maybe have some long-term downstream wealth come impact. in for you yeah yeah impacts, you know what i'm saying but the most important part is the education piece of this it will provide financial education and literacy to participants to help them make informed decisions about managing their money and understanding the benefits and risks associated with these circles. So there's nothing like, in my, I don't know if you agree with this sentiment, but there's nothing like peer pressure. So if you're, <laughs> if, no, there's not. So if, yeah, if no, I agree. One, I'm laughing. If, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, if, yep. I agree. No, if you're in one of these groups and you give somebody your word that you're going to do something, and then it comes to you, your time to to give or donate. Now, I understand things happen in life, unexpected things or whatever. And if you mm -hmm. have those things defined and stuff like that's fine. But there's nothing like somebody else, look, a bunch of people looking at you like, hey, Walt, what's up? Yeah. Everybody yeah, else man. gave. I get it. Everybody else communicated. Accountability. And that can, yep. That, and that can make people lose trust in you and like lose faith. I don't want to do, I don't want to do this anymore if Walt's involved in it. Because mm -hmm. he's been doing this. He's been doing that. So mm -hmm. that's There's just some things to think there. about. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you want to follow those established guidelines. You want to be vigilant and about the potential risk that participating in a SUSU saving circle can bring. A SUSU uh, circle can be a valuable tool for building financial stability and achieving long-term goals. But if it's done wrong, it, it can also bring about a lots, lots of risk and you could be out oh, of yeah. money. You lose you know money. Saying? Yeah. Yep. As we near the end of this episode, we'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to you for listening. Before we sign off, here are a couple of quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. We love engaging with our audience and you'll be able to receive exclusive updates and behind the scenes content. Thank you for being a part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, 
and most importantly, keep going. Yep. Yep. You lose money. You got to be yeah. careful who you're dealing with, man. I just, I got burned recently in the last few years by a young man who was out there on IG, <laughs> me and a partner. Me and remember, I was, I was telling him about partner. you. I was telling you about him. Yep. Oof, yep. He did, so pop, he so did a partner move. <laughs> he did so a partner move for, for sure. <laughs> No, I'm glad I didn't get anybody else involved because yeah. we ended up, me and my 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 partner, my neighbor, ended up losing money with this kid because he was trying to do, basically, how you, yeah, it was illegal, illegal forex trading for like a broker. You could do it legally, and when you do it legally, they have more money requirements, higher risk, higher money to get involved, blah blah blah. This kid, he was trying to do it. He and honestly, at the end of the day. He would probably just scammed really well. He saw the he took advantage of social media. He saw how he could really influence this the people, and just probably made out with, I would say between fifty and a hundred grand of people's money. Wow, yep. bro! I would say conservatively he made whatever out, happened he, he with went him. Out. Whatever happened with he, him, he disappeared. He disappeared from IG. Because remember, wow. all we had was his IG handle. We never thought to get his phone number. And if, even if we got it, it would have been the right one or whatever. He could have dropped yeah. everything. Yeah, he, yeah, even if we try to valid, the only thing that we should have could have done is, hey, we need to meet in person. And I'll zell you in person when I meet you and I see you get some mm-hmm, validation. I see your license. Yep. Mm-hmm. I want to see, you know, won't like that could have been the way to do it. But we were so like desperate yeah. for money and it sounded so great. That we just got blinded by it and it was just like, oh, end up losing the money. So you got to be and, careful oh, who you get involved with. So you got involved with him because your neighbor suggested because my it. neighbor was. Yep. 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 And yeah, exactly. So that peer pressure, like you said, that's what made me think of it. <laughs> but hey, it's not it wasn't my neighbor. I didn't blame my neighbor. Right? I made the decision on my own. You and, know, yeah, and I lost. The the I lost. Yeah. yeah, I lost. And that's what investing is. that You take risks. But yeah being informed mitigates that risk it lessens yes, the risk the more you're informed yes, the more the credible more credible you're going to you're going to do way better with robin hood and jp morgan's apps than fulano from ig <laughs> from your neighbor who is doing a yeah. susu like yeah. you're gonna, walt Educate is a very yourself. trusting person and hey great oh. you might it depends but I, I, we, yeah we'll get I, to it I, I, I give grace I don't know if I yeah. just <laughs> don't take it. Don't take kindness for stupid, right? Like, yeah, I've no been doubt. burned too many times, man. Trying to deal with people yeah. and money, and that, that, exactly. that's a perfect segue, man, to the safe talk segment, right? Yep. Should we mix money matters with friends, family, coworkers, business, savings, investing? Yeah, and hey, what do you feel about that, man? Should we mix uh, money matters with the people in our circle? I guess it depends. <laughs> Because I my, my knee jerk re answer is hell no, I've been burnt too many times. But mm. we're friends and we've mixed money matters. But mm. we do we did it legally, we did it yes. the right we way. Sign something right. We sign something. We agree. We're partners. Like it, we take we're taking the risk for the wins and the losses together. Yes. So yes. it's a different. It's different. When you legally bind, shoot, you, I'll do a susu all day if I could sign a document and I can see your, and I, if I know who the person is and his credentials, and hey, I know yep. we're going through this uh, kind of in a, in a, shoot, even if they sign a promise, some, like for me to do it, the administrator of the susu would have to sign a document to everybody in it that if it defaults yes. and something goes wrong, they are going to cover, they're yeah, not, li- they're going to, they're liable for not stealing anybody's money. Now, yes, you can't, be liable for someone who commits to be a part of it and then doesn't follow through. That's yeah. different. You know what I mean? But even that, there's got to be insurances because if you're the first person that gets paid out in the SUSU and then you decide not to pay back in the rest I'm of done. your payments, peace, mm-hmm. fools. Like, how do you, how do we take care of that? How does that address? Because now well, he just see, stole from the great the group. That's why I think, that's why I think what it said, you have to. I, I share the same sentiment, right, with you, because okay. it really just depends, bro. Because no, for sure, it, 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 it really just depends because it's just there's always going to be a risk, and I think you have to understand as long as you understand that hey, there's a risk in this because we're not doing it through a conventional banking system. We're doing it amongst ourselves. 
there's you, you have to understand hey okay, somebody may do us dirty somebody in a group may yep. be shady like that that's why it's important i think if you are going to do it you need to know the people and at least know some of their habits as much as possible that's why if you get with somebody that like Brian's neighbor referred him to this that dude on IG he trusted his neighbor I don't know how you felt but you may have trusted somebody yeah, in this situation just, and that's it for me like I would have to I trust just took a risk. Yeah, whether they're friends or okay, whether they're friends or family, in order for me to do a susu, I would have to at least know, hey, this person, how is their life how is their how does their life look? Are they constantly doing this? Not to hold any anybody's past against them or anything like that, but in in their past, how have they been if I know that they have a bunch of repossessions, if I know that they're always constantly robbing Peter to pay Paul. If I know mm-hmm. that they're constantly doing all these different things, is that something that I, is that somebody that I want to get in bed with in a financial yep, exactly. sense? So it honestly depends. Like you, it's either way, like Brian said, it's going to be a risk. So it depends. Like, should we, maybe if it's going to help the group in a whole, maybe not. Right. Yeah. No, I feel you. I don't know, man. It. It's a tough one, man. It's doing biz, and I've done business with family, and but see, we didn't. I didn't have any legal agreement then. And it was uh, just uh, you get so excited, the, and you on, but then on, on the strength of blood, yep. And you don't think anything of you. Like, oh, this is blood. It's, nothing's gonna go wrong. And when money gets involved, things can go wrong. Folks can think differently and start thinking about, and it's okay. That was my lesson. I'm a student yeah. of business, and I've been trying to do business for uh, since I was like 19. I, shoot, if you count the comic book sales and the lemonade stands and the delivering newspapers as a kid and shoveling driveways and doing all these things, I've been, this is all my life. This is a lifelong yeah. journey of entrepreneurship. Oh, oh yes, um, man. And you just take it all as, I have my master's in business just from the school of hard knocks. You know yeah. what I mean? Not. I do have a business degree, but the master's part came because just hard knocks, just experience, just getting burnt, learning from mistakes yep. and continuing yep. to do that. We still make mistakes. So I just make less of them now, you know, yes. but yeah. yeah, yeah, man. It, it, so for that, it really would depend and getting involved with family and friends on the business level would require legal documentation, legal agreements, yeah. as it should be with anyone you get involved with business. That that's my that's my two cents for it. You know what I mean? I, I you reminded me of this story. Like growing up, you ever had the candy lady in the hood? Like the candy, yep. the, the lady who sold like candy and pickled eggs and all this other stuff from mm-hmm. her house. Yep. And she didn't have a LLC. She didn't have anything nope. legally business right, but she was just out there like buying stuff and selling stuff from her house and doing this. Mm-hmm. And it I remember a story yep. of. Growing up where these two friends, they started doing that. Hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell in my neighborhood. You sell in your neighborhood. We'll come together oh, no and doubt. buy this and buy that. And then, but one, one of the friends was taking a little extra and doing this and oh. wasn't really sharing. All, yes. And the other day found out and they ended up beefing. And like, that was the yeah. end of that relationship because one person in that started getting a little greedy like that can happen in these susu circles and even if they're blood or not you know what i'm saying even if you're blood oh, related yeah. or not, it, it yeah. can happen man so you just it's gonna i just go back to it, that it is a risk you have to understand and if you understand that then i think you will go into it a little bit more at ease okay i know this is a risk for me because i'm doing this and it's not especially if it's, if, if it's a legal circle and then somebody does something that goes against the agreement then at least you know that hey we have something in writing then if the person that um is the collector of all funds does something then they're liable like brian said so you just have to understand that there is a risk in my opinion heck yeah anything to do with money saving is not risky though (laughs) saving when somebody else's pocket though it is you really you think about it, you get again you giving somebody else money like I that's I think that's safe when it's not even you can't even trust your parents sometimes like 
I've seen parents that, oh, I, yeah, my, my son gave me money to save for them, but pff, I spent that shit. I give them food, oh. and I give them this. and blah, look, at like, Britney, oh. look at Britney Spears with the conservatorship. Yes. Right? Yes. How crazy is that? Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Think about yeah. her own dad, like, this stuff. Yeah. See, and I think that's a good way to end it off. It's, if you're going to get, no matter what, no matter who it is, <laughs> you're getting involved yes. in money, right? Yes. You need some type of legal documentation, some, some grounds so that I can come back at you and say, look, this is not what we agreed on, man. And, you, and guess what? You can take that to court. You can take yes. their small claims, right? You can take that to court. And that would give you all you needed. <laughs> look, this is a, e- you know what I'm saying? This is an email. We both, and you, and make sure people ratify it. Yes, I approve. And <laughs> yeah. And if you're in the wrong family, like mafioso, I'm just playing. But <laughs> oh, <poof. laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't do that. So, yeah, thanks, folks. That's a good topic. I like when we continue to talk about these topics of how to save, how to just financial wellness, man. This journey yeah. of financial wellness is deep. It could take a, it, it takes a lot of research and takes just time. Yeah. It just takes time. Put some time into yourself. Invest in yourself. Yes, um, invest in education, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. What so else, man, before in, we go? Tune in next week. Next week, we're going to be Ooh, talking yes. about if your employer can take your entire paycheck or not. That's right. Can they deduct, if they feel like you owe them something, can they just take it out your check without telling you, is it possible? We're going to talk about those things because the rules are shocking, folks. State by state, yes. it's different rules, and we're going to go into yes. it. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Thank you, sir. All right, man. Till next time, folks. Have a good one. We love you. Peace. Peace.